sensors are devices that detect some type of input from the physical environment. The data they read is key for making decisions in automated and intelligent systems. In today's lesson, you'll learn how to read some commonly used sensors and interpret their values in Arduino. We'll demonstrate this using a rain sensor, a soil moisture sensor, a digital temperature and humidity sensor, and a digital barometric pressure sensor. We'll break down the key differences between analog and digital sensors so you can choose the perfect one for your next project. Hey everyone, it's me, Joe Edgo, and welcome back to Education is Life. Today, we're on lesson 4 of the series, Level Up with Arduino Uno R4 Wi-Fi IoT Development Crash Course. Throughout this series, we will be working alongside this 52Pi Cloud Ready Starter Kit. If you're interested, you can check it out on their website at 52Pi.com or at Amazon. Links are provided below. Again, thank you so much 52Pi for sponsoring the series. To start, let's talk about the rain sensor module. Rain sensors are used to detect rainfall. They are commonly found on cars to detect raindrops, triggering automatic features like turning on windshield wipers and closing sunroofs. They are also found in many home automation and intelligent agriculture projects. A rain sensor commonly consists of two components, a sensing pad and a sensor module. This sensing pad includes two header pins that are internally connected to these two series copper tracks, typically coated with nickel. These pins are then used to connect this pad to the rain sensor module using a pair of jumper wires. Here, one of these sensor module pins provide a 5 volt power supply towards one path of the sensing pad, whereas the other pin gets the return power from another path of the sensing pad. This sensor, like many others, work on the principle of resistance. It detects rain by measuring the changes in electrical resistance imposed by these copper paths that act as a variable resistor whose resistance varies according to the amount of water on its surface. Usually, when the pad is dry, the resistance is high. It is less conductive because these copper-coated paths are not physically connected. However, once water falls on the surface of this sensing pad, the conductivity will increase, thus the resistance is reduced. Here, the resistance is inversely proportional to the amount of water present on the surface. The more water on the surface of the sensing pad, the better the conductivity, and this will result in a lower resistance. Now, this sensor module includes some components like potentiometer to control the sensitivity of the digital output, an LM393 voltage comparator IC, an output LED, and a power LED. This side of the sensor module has four pins a VCC and a ground to power the module. We can either use 3.3 volts or 5 volts. A DO pin that produces digital output, it can be connected to any of the digital pins of your Arduino configured as input. We'll use pin 2. And an AO pin that produces analog output. It can be connected to any of these 6 analog input pins labeled A0 to A5. We'll use A0. One of the key differences between analog and digital sensors is their output data. Analog outputs provide a continuous range of values, while digital outputs have a discrete value determined by the number of bits used to represent the signal. For example, this rain sensor's digital output pin sends only a 1-bit value, either 0 or 1, based on whether it is raining or not, while its analog output pin sends an analog signal in terms of voltage between 0 volts and the supplied voltage, in this case, 0 to 5 volts. Now, Reading the sensor value in Arduino is fairly straightforward. We can read either the digital signal, the analog signal, or both. To do that, first let's declare a constant int variable called sensor pin and assign pin2 to, to it. This is where we connected the digital output pin of the sensor module. Then, let's set the pin mode to input. Now, to monitor the sensor data in real time, we'll use the serial monitor built into the Arduino IDE. To do that, we must first start the serial communication using the begin method with a specified baud rate. We'll use the default value of 9600 bits per second, although you can set a different baud rate if you want to. In the main loop, let's declare a local int variable we call digital value and assign a value that will be coming from the sensor's digital output pin. Here, we simply use the digital read function, similar to reading a button. However, to read the analog value, we need to use the analog read function and specify which analog pin to read. Pin A0 is where the analog output pin of the sensor module is connected. Here, 
we don't need to set the pin mode when reading a value from an analog pin. Now, we assign the return value of this function to another int variable we call ADC value. Here, the values that we will be getting are based on the resolution of the analog to digital converters used by this Arduino board. The default ADC resolution for the Arduino Uno R4 boards is 10 bits, but it supports up to a maximum of 14 bits resolution. So, what does it mean? If we only have one bit to represent something in the real world, we only have two possible outcomes, either 0 or 1. For example, raining or not raining. But then again, we live in an analog world where there are infinite possible values of rain intensities, sounds, colors, temperatures, and everything. Using only one bit to represent something from an analog world is not sufficient. So, as we increase the number of bits to represent an analog value, the more precise it can get. And this is exponential. For example, if we have 2 bits, we'll have 4 discrete levels. If we have 5 bits, we'll have 32 discrete levels. If we have 10 bits, we'll have 1024 discrete levels. And if we have 14 bits, we'll have 16384 discrete levels. That is 2 raised to the number of bits. So, when we talk of ADC resolution, we refer to the number of bits used to digitize an analog signal. The greater the ADC resolution, the more precise the measurement values. So, if we use the default 10-bit ADC resolution of the Arduino Uno, then the analog signal between 0 and 5 volts will be symbolized in a decimal number from 0 to 1023. And if we want to know the analog voltages corresponding to each of these 0 to 1023 discrete levels, we can have a simple computation in our program that maps the values being read. For that, let's declare a local float variable, analog volts, then map the ADC value being read by multiplying 5.0 volts, this is the maximum voltage, and dividing it by 1023, this is the maximum ADC value. And that's it. Now, to display the readings on the serial monitor, we call the serial print method. Let's print the digital value. And then on the same line, let's print the actual digital value. After this, let's put a horizontal tab to have a space before we print ADC value, followed by the actual ADC value. Let's have another horizontal tab and an equal sign. Here, let's also print the equivalent 10-bit binary value. Then another horizontal tab. And finally, we print the analog volts. Also, let's have a short delay before looping back to perform the sensor reading again. Now, let's upload the code and see what happens. As you can see, when there are no raindrops on the sensing pad, the resistance is high, and the digital pin reads logic 1. The ADC value is almost reaching the maximum reading of 1023, and here's the equivalent 10-bit binary value, as well as the analog readings and volts. However, when raindrops are present, the resistance is reduced as well as the analog voltage readings. The more intense the rainfall, the lower the analog voltage we receive. Also, notice that the digital value turns zero. It means that the input voltage drops below a set threshold, indicating the presence of rain. This threshold can be adjusted through this potentiometer. We can also change the default resolution to a higher value by calling the analog read resolution function. We can set it to 12 bits so that the analog voltage readings from 0 to 5 volts will be mapped into integer values from 0 to 4095 instead of 0 to 1023. Or we can set it to 14 bit resolution so we can have a more precise measurement value from 0 to 16383. Now, make sure to divide this by 16,383 as well. So, let's upload the code and see what happens. As you noticed, using a 14-bit resolution is more sensitive and precise in reading slight variations in the input voltage. Another very similar sensor is a soil moisture sensor. It uses the same sensor control module, and it is also based on the principle of resistance. Now, instead of a sensing pad, the sensor consists of two probes which allow the current to pass through the soil and then it gets the resistance value to measure the moisture of the soil. Dry soil conducts electricity poorly, 
This results in high resistance and therefore high output voltage readings. But when the soil moisture is high, meaning more water is present, the easier the electricity flows. So, a decreased resistance due to higher moisture content results in a lower sensor voltage reading. We learned that analog sensors generate a continuous output signal or voltage that is directly proportional to the quantity it is designed to measure. These sensors produce analog output and are particularly suited for measuring continuous, variable quantities such as soil moisture, amount of rain, temperature, speed, pressure, and many more. When working with sensors that produce analog outputs, we typically use the microcontroller's analog input pins to read the signals and then convert them into digital signals based on the ADC resolution. Then, we are the ones to interpret the converted signal in our program. There are sensors that you can buy that are considered digital sensors. Digital sensors, in contrast to their analog counterparts, already include the analog to digital conversion process in the sensor itself. Unlike analog sensors, digital sensors provide discrete output signals that are already represented by binary values. One good example is this DHT11 sensor. This digital humidity and temperature sensor is a composite sensor that contains a calibrated digital signal output of temperature and humidity. Although it reads analog temperature and humidity values using a resistive wet component and NTC thermistor, it includes a high-performance 8-bit microcontroller to produce a 40-bit digital output. 8-bit humidity integer plus 8-bit humidity decimal plus 8-bit temperature integer plus 8-bit temperature decimal plus 8-bit checksum. As a result, only three pins are available for use, VCC, ground, and data. It can be supplied with either 3.3 volts or 5 volts. The data pin can be connected to any digital pin of your Arduino configured as input. We'll use pin 2. Now, reading the humidity and temperature values is very easy. First, we install the DHT sensor library by Adafruit. Then, we include the DHT header file in our sketch. We create a constant int variable we call DHT pin and assign pin 2 to it. Or we can define a constant DHT pin so it doesn't take up any program memory space on the chip. The compiler will just replace references to these constants with a defined value at compile time. However, please note that when using defined constants, you lose the benefit of using a variable like scoping and data types. Then we create a DHT object and specify two arguments the DHT pin, and the DHT type, which is DHT11. Here, you could specify another type such as DHT22. In the setup function, we call the serial begin function and the DHT begin function to initialize the DHT sensor. Now, to read data from a DHT sensor, simply call the read humidity and read temperature methods. Please note that the DHT11 sensor has a sampling frequency of 1 Hz, which means it is capable of reading data after every one second. For this, we'll put a one second delay before reading the values. Then we'll create three local variables of type float. The first one we'll call humi. We'll use it to store the humidity readings. The second one we'll call tempc. We'll use it to store the temperature readings in degrees Celsius. And the third one we'll call tempf. We'll use it to store the temperature readings in degrees Fahrenheit. Note that the read temperature method accepts an optional parameter of type boolean. If we do not specify anything here, the default temperature reading is degrees Celsius. However, if we want the values to be read in degrees Fahrenheit, we can set this to true. Now, before displaying the humidity and the temperature on the serial monitor, we need to be sure that these sensor readings are received properly. And to do that, we'll use the function isNone. This function checks if the value of a variable being asked is not a number. If so, it returns true. So, if either the humidity or the temp C or the temp F is not a number, we'll print a message, failed to read from DHT sensor. And then, we call the return keyword so that it exits immediately and start the loop function again to start reading. However, if the humidity and temperature variables contain valid numerical values, this indicates a successful reading from the DHT sensor. We can now proceed with displaying the humidity and temperature data. So, we print humidity, followed by the actual value and a percentage symbol. Then, on the same line, we print temperature, followed by the actual value in degrees Celsius. 
and a degree symbol. To type the symbol, press Alt 0176. And finally, we also print the temperature readings in degrees Fahrenheit. Now, let's upload the code and verify the results. And there you have it. With the use of a library and some simple function calls, we can read temperature and humidity values in real time. Another example of the digital temperature, humidity, and pressure sensor is the BMP280 sensor module. This high-precision atmospheric pressure sensor module can measure the air pressure and temperature with high accuracy. It can help you monitor the weather conditions and create projects that use altitude or barometric pressure data. It uses I2C or SPI serial communication protocols, which is more advanced than a simple on-off style used on basic digital sensors. If high-speed data transfer is a priority, then SPI may be the better choice due to its full duplex communication and high data rates. However, if the speed requirements are moderate and other factors such as simplicity and power consumption are more important, then I2C may be more suitable. To connect this module using I2C protocol, we need to use these two pins, the serial data line or SDA and the serial clock line or SEL. The Arduino Uno R4 Wi-Fi has two I2C buses. Note, however, that pins A4 and A5 are both connected to the same I2C bus marked with the pins SDA and SEL. Now, to use it in our sketch, we need to install the Adafruit BMP280 library. Here is a sample program that reads the temperature, pressure, and altitude. The wire library is used for I2C communication protocol, while the Adafruit BMP280 provides an interface for the BMP sensor to read temperature, pressure, and altitude easily. The setup function initializes the serial communication, checks for the BMP280 sensor using the default I2C address, and sets up the sensor with default settings from the datasheet. Now, the loop function reads data from the BMP280 sensor for temperature, pressure, and altitude, and then prints them to the serial monitor. Let's upload this code and see how it looks. And there you have it. With the use of a library and some simple function calls, we can read temperature, pressure, and approximate altitude values in real time. Both analog and digital sensors continue to play a vital role in various applications. While analog sensors excel in situations that require precise measurements and continuous data representation, digital sensors are often preferred by some when accuracy, reliability, simplicity, and compatibility with digital systems are of great importance. Again, thank you so much for joining me in this fourth lesson of the series, Level Up with Arduino Uno R4 Wi-Fi, IoT Development Crash Course. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more Arduino lessons, please hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell so you never miss a new upload. You can also share this video with your friends who might be interested in learning more about Arduino. The more viewers we have, the more in-depth content we can create for you in the future. So, keep learning, keep experimenting, and always remember, education is life. See you in our next lesson. Happy coding!